everyone. We have a governing principle that the Gemara and Baba Kama teaches us. Adam Muad Leolam. A person is always responsible for one's behavior. The Gemara there gives explicit examples. Vain air, vain yoshain. Even when a person is asleep, if let's say people are lying next to each other and the person rolls over in sleep and damages the other person, so he's obligated, he's high, he's muad. And even though there, there certainly is no element of intent involved. And uh, this is a governing principle in halacha, that a person is always responsible. In this week's parsha, we are taught about uh, what could be called uh, manslaughter, accidental uh, killing of, of a person. And the Torah describes that the person goes into exile. He lives in a near miklot. He's restricted to uh, in his activities. How do we uh, deal with uh, this idea that uh, on one hand, other muad lola? person is always responsible and apparently fully responsible. And we say even when he's not aware. And here somehow uh, there's an accidental death. The Torah describes uh, uh, chopping wood in a forest. There are two ways to interpret uh, what happened. One is that the uh, person is killed by because of a splinter of wood, it's like shrapnel. And the other is that the uh, metal head of the axe uh, slips off the handle and strikes the person. But in all of, both of these cases, it says in the Torah of Ahulo, so neo, so mitmo, shul shom. There's no animosity here. There's no intent. Vuelakim ino liyodo. So to speak, heaven made it happen. And because of that, therefore, uh, there's a twilight. Uh, zone here. The go, there's somebody that's a, called the Goel Adam. It's a very complicated halacha. It's a second parak in uh, Marcos. It's discussed by all the Rishonim and Achronim, but it's a, a very murky subject because it doesn't fit, uh, so to speak, into the norms of uh, halachic organization. So Velakimina Liyodo means that heaven did it. It's what we call Bashert, right? The, the person uh, has almost no uh, choice in the matter. 
And in fact, Rashi points out the, uh, again, quoting the Gemara, that the circumstances are that the person that was killed somehow was high of me for something else. So the Rabbanu Shalom put together all of these people, the man that was high of me should get killed. This person, because of the fact that he's not careful, goes into Golas. It's all part of some great heavenly plan that is not uh, understandable to us at all. Another question that's raised is the example of the acts is that meant as an example of accidental murder? Or is that the only case of Golas that the Torah talks about? Uh, we have unfortunately uh, many uh, instances of people who are killed by accidents. Automobiles, work accidents, all sorts of things. Unintentional firing of firearms. There's almost uh, no limit to uh, the accidental incidents that can occur. Is there a Dean of Golas there too? In other words, this case of the ax is only meant to be an example. It's the paradigm of accidents, but that other accidents are also included, that you would also be high of Golas, also would have to go into uh, the city of refuge. There's a great discussion about this in, uh, in Halacha. And part of it is because the Talmud in uh, Maseches Makos, as I mentioned, uh, is very detailed about the case of the acts and that it has to be derech yirida, not derech aliyah, the acts descending, not going up, all sorts of technicalities from which uh, one could deduce that this is the only case they're talking about. And because of the technicalities that are involved, it becomes almost an impossible case ever to happen. So did it happen? From the Gomorrah and from the Mishnah, the conclusion would be that it did happen and that there were already Miklot, and that there were people who were there. So if we're talking only about this particular example, how many such cases could there be? How often is it that uh, two people go into the forest to chop wood together and that such a thing would happen? And therefore, uh, there is uh, uh, the opinion that this is an example and that accidental killings unfortunately occur all the time. How, do, uh, how does this fit in with Odomu and Lolo? If we say a person is uh, always responsible for what one does, it says by bonus, by Marotson, he intended it, he didn't intend it. Purely accidental. Because we, we can understand that in uh, accidents themselves, there are degrees of accidents. There's something that's uh, a thousand to one, there's something that's only 10 to one. So uh, do we draw a line? And we find that in halachet. <coughs> There's something called Shogay Kor of Lamezi. 
which uh, in our terms would be, uh, let's say, gross negligence. The person really didn't have intent, intent, but he behaves in such a uh, manner uh, that's a disregard for what can happen, and therefore, it's correlated. It's as though he intended because he took no precautions whatsoever. So this halacha is fragmented into many, many uh, different scenarios, how it could be, how it can work. Then uh, to further uh, uh, complicate the matter, so to speak, we have a concept also in the Gemara that there are people that are potter bidei odom, b'chai bidei shamay. Bezdin will say that he's not responsible. There's no punishment to him. But in heaven, they say he is responsible. In heaven, they will hold him responsible for it. So how do we deal with that? On what plane? There are many uh, that say that that really is the din of Golos. We can't execute him for the murder because he's part of the din of But nevertheless, there was a gross negligence here. Something did happen. And this person was the catalyst for it happening. So he's chayab b'dina shamayim. And many Mephoshim say that Golas is a Dine Shamayim Din, more than a Dine Odom Din. And that's why the Nevi'im, for instance, uh, we find in the Torah that the punishment that was visited upon the Jewish people as a whole is a Din of Golas. Because that's Bedina Shemai. So all of these things are uh, in play, so to speak. How do we look at these halachas? What does the Torah mean here? And uh, there are times when the Gemara says, Lo lo nivra. There, there really is no practical application to it. Drosh v'kabel schai. But it doesn't say it here. The whole chapter in uh, Masechus Makos is based upon reality and upon real circumstances and upon what people actually do. So we're back to the original concept of Odomu Lola. The person is always responsible. Before she to make one difference, uh, with which I'm going to conclude. Adamu al Olam, they say, is a din by Nezikin. It's a halacha regarding damages. If you damage someone, there's no criminal action involved there. And there's no loss of life. So Adamu al Olam, you're always high. When it comes to accidental murder, so there the rule of Adamu at Lolom doesn't apply. That's in a different category because the human life has been taken and therefore, uh, so to speak, the stakes have been elevated. It's a different type of thing. There are many that disagree with that theory and are left with the questions which, which they deal with. Now that, that uh, small uh, peric in Makos has engendered a, uh, an enormous amount of rabbinic literature over the years to try and come to conclusions regarding these matters. And uh, 
There are many psychological things involved as well. Golus ends when the Kohen Godel dies. Then they can all leave. So the Gemara says that the families of the Kohanim Gdolim used to uh, bring food and uh, delicacies to the people in Golus so that they should not pray that the Kohen Godel should die. So that's a further comment. Why should it be dependent on the Kohen Godel? So you say, because in his time it happened. <laughs> so again, you're dealing with heaven in these matters, not with earthly things, because he has no power to prevent uh, somebody in the forest from uh, chopping wood and accidentally killing somebody. So all of this is involved in the, uh, this halacha. Uh, and uh, as I said, uh, there is a voluminous amount of rabbinic uh, ideas over the centuries to try and deal with these problems because they are moral problems that we have today. God forbid the automobile accidents happen all the time. People are homeless, laundered, destroyed. What, what, what's involved here? So we should only uh, learn these things in theory, but not really have to experience them, God forbid, in our society.